Oh, and welcome to Kids Church for All Ages! It's me, Teacher JC. And I'm Teacher Annika. And we want to give a shout out to a couple of people. Yes, hello to Kurt Garcia or Kurt Garcia and Jaylor Soretta. Hello, Hi, and kids. we also want to say a happy birthday to Dustin Tan and Juan. Hello! Wow, happy birthday, happy kids! Birthday. So we are now on the third week of our series called Power, Power of, of Words. Words. Our service today will start off with something different. Mm. Yeah. We are going to sing Whoa. and dance Whoa. to this song as we praise and worship God. All right, welcome to the Lions vs. Wolverines Praise Dance Competition! Now let's see who wins and who got best moves. Better the lions or show the show us the move. Uh, okay, or the wolverines. <laughs> show us the moves. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know down below. Oh yeah, I actually forgot that this was a competition because I had so much fun worshiping God through singing and dancing. Wow. Indeed, God is with us wherever we are. It says in Psalm 22, verse 3, God is enthroned on the praises of Israel. Wow. And today we will continue to praise God before we learn about the power, power of, of praise. praise. Marked by the blood that 
sons and daughters. Thank you for welcoming us into your family. I pray that we would be more like you each day by your grace. And I pray, Lord, that you would create that hunger and thirst in our hearts for more of you every single day of our lives. We love you. We commit this time of worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another way we can worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. On a desk of Nara, inside a beautiful scrapbook, various curious creations were gathering together before the craftsman to ask a curious question. What's with the sketch? Asked the different paper shapes. Yeah, what's the story with these guys? Why are they in jail? 
What happened? This, started the craftsman, is a reminder of when two of my greatest creations did a most amazing thing. Really? Exhaled the bedazzled pieces of paper. With an excited smile, the craftsman begins his tale. Listen closely now. It all started when two of my children, Polygon Paul and Silas Square, ran into a doll who was a slave to evil spirits. She would tell people their future to pay her triangle masters. But my disciples freed her from those demons. Her masters were mad. It's like their chance for riches was taken from them. So they had Paul and Silas taken to prison. And there, in that deep, dark dungeon, beaten and hurt, lost and alone, they did the most powerful, most wonderful thing they could ever think of doing. Did they fool the guards into setting them free? Did they find a hidden way out of prison? Did they rally the other prisoners, lead a revolt against their captors, and turn the whole justice system upside down? Um, <laughs> paused the craftsman. They did the most wonderful thing. The only thing you can do in such desperate times. They sang psalms of praise to their maker, worship songs of victory to their creator, hymns of thanks to the master craftsman. And God responded by shaking the whole prison and breaking their chains. When the jailer woke up, he lost hope thinking his masters would punish him for letting the prisoners escape. But Paul said, Don't worry, we're still here. You won't be harmed. And then Paul told him the greatest story ever known. That made them praise and sing to God. The jailer was so overwhelmed with joy that he joined them in worshipping the Maker that day. Wow! shouted the paper shapes. So, then life is really all about you, our maker, whom we can trust and honor no matter what. The craftsman nodded to their applause. Oh, Mr. Craftsman, wondered our paper rose friend, what was the story that captured their hearts and made them sing so? The craftsman picked up the rose an awesome idea coming to his mind as he stared at the blood-red color of its petals. Now that is a story worth telling. And once again, the Master Craftsman went to work, looking for a way to show us the greatest story ever. Hey kids, I'm Pastor Bodhi, your teacher today. As we continue our series, The Power of Words, we'll be talking about the power of praise. Praise, encouraging words or actions that express approval or admiration for someone. Have you ever received praises before? You're so intelligent. You're the best player in your team. You look amazing. We usually receive praise when We've done something good. Now, when we talk about praise in relation to God, it is the act of declaring how great, how wonderful, how perfect He is and His works. If we people receive praise when we've done something good, when do we and when should we praise God? When you receive the toys you've been wishing for, when you score high on your exam, do we praise God only in the good times? What about the bad times? Can you praise God when you're sick? Can you praise God when you're grounded? Let's learn the answer as we look back at the time Apostle Paul and his friend Silas were unjustly thrown to prison. 
In Acts chapter 16, verses 22 to 24, it says, The crowd joined in the attack on Paul and Silas. Then the officials tore the clothes off the two men and ordered them to be beaten with a whip. After they had been badly beaten, they were put in jail, and the jailer was told to guard them carefully. The jailer did as he was told. He put them deep inside the jail and chained their feet to heavy blocks of wood. Paul and Silas were good men. Why were they in prison then, you may ask? Well, during one of their missions trips, a slave girl with an evil spirit followed them around. This evil spirit gave the slave girl the ability to sell the future, which her masters turned into a fortune-telling business. As Paul and Silas were walking to a place of prayer, this slave girl kept following them around wherever they went, and she was announcing loudly that they would teach people how to be saved. It might seem like a noble thing to do, but know that the slave girl did not do this to help them, but to cause trouble. Ah! Knowing that the evil spirit was up to no good, Paul commanded it to leave the slave girl in the powerful name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So the spirit had no choice but to leave. Because of this, the slave girl lost her ability of selling the future, and this made her masters very, very angry because it meant no more fortune-telling business for them. No more money. <laughs> to get back at Paul and Silas, the owners gave a false report to the city officials so the two men would be punished. That's why they were stripped off their clothes, badly beaten, bound with chains in their hands and wood on their ankles to keep them from running away. And then they were thrown into a dark, dirty, and stinky prison. How would you feel if you were these two men? I'd probably be complaining and ranting all day and all night about the injustice I experienced. That was so unfair. But you know what they did? In verses 25 and 26, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God while the other prisoners listened. Suddenly, a strong earthquake shook the jail to its foundations. The doors opened and the chains fell from all the prisoners. In the middle of their pain and discomfort, Paul and Silas chose to pray and to praise God. The prisoners were probably thinking, can you just let us sleep? These guys are weirdos. But Paul and Silas didn't care. They sang songs about God's power, God's faithfulness, and God's goodness all night. Here we learn that we can praise God whether we are in a good situation or a bad situation. You know why? Because whatever our situation, we know that our God is always good and He is always working for our good. Paul and Silas probably thought, we may be bound in chains and suffering right now, but we are 100% sure that we won't stay this way because our God will surely help us. No doubt about that. And that God did. After a strong earthquake, their chains miraculously fell to the ground and the prison gates were opened widely to set Paul and Silas free. As these men chose to praise, they set the stage for God's glory to be displayed in and through their lives. That's why kids, whatever it is that you're going through, always choose to praise God. Because our point for today, praising God shifts our focus to God and allows Him to move in a powerful way. Can you say that with me? Praising God shifts our focus to God and allows Him to move in a powerful way. Remember, God is greater than anything and anyone in this world. So instead of magnifying our problems, let's magnify our great God who always saves. Praise. Speak of it. Sing of it. Every day, in every situation, so that we could live out our power truth. Our power truth, my words will reveal Jesus is my Lord. Can you say that with me? My words will reveal Jesus is my Lord. And our power verse for this series, Psalm 1914 says, May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and redeemer. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart
cause of my heart Be pleasing to you, Lord my rock May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart Be pleasing to you, Lord my rock and Redeemer Praises are powerful. It lifts up our great and mighty God both in this world and in our hearts, allowing us to see our situations in a new light. Also, according to Psalm 22, 3, God inhabits the praises of His people. As we praise Him, He draws near to us. So kids, let us continue to enjoy the presence of God every day by choosing to live a life of praise. Can you do that? With God's help, I'm sure we all can. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this time and thank you that you are a God who is worthy of our praise. You are a God whom we will never ever find enough reasons to thank you for and to praise you for. And today we choose to lift your mighty name up on high. Whatever situation we are going through, we know that you are good and we know that you will help us. So help us to live a life of praise. Once again, we thank you, Jesus, for displaying to us the wonderful power and love of our great God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In high moments and in low moments, I always remind myself to praise God. Not only because of what He's done, but because of who He is. Even when things seem bad, I praise God for His goodness. He is our Father, He is our Lord, He is our God, and He is in control. As we praise Him with our words, we see past our experiences and remember who our God is. What is one way that God has been great in your life? Share your thoughts with their family. Craft time. It's raffle time! But first, I would like to greet Nigel and Jessica belated happy birthday! Now it's time to draw the winners of our craft raffle for the month of July. All three winners will be getting this craft kit. 
Congratulations to... Irza Banting. Next. Carol Elnar. And lastly... Tori Angeles. Congratulations! We will ship your prizes soon, so please keep in touch through this email. Kids, it's me again, Teacher Nikki. I'm excited to spend another weekend with you as we get creative. Today, we are going to create our very own instrument using two plastic spoons, an Easter egg, washi tape, and some beans or rice. If you don't have an Easter egg at home, you can always repurpose an old water bottle to create this craft. Now, let's start. First, Let's scoop a spoonful of beans and place it inside the Easter egg. Try to shake it to see if you like the sound. If you want a fuller sound, you can add more beans. Now let's take both our spoons and tape them together using washi tape. Sandwich the egg in between. Make sure your egg is upside down. Secure this quickly with washi tape. For the finishing touches, you can add stickers for fun. Ta-da! Our maracas are done! Now, this is what it'll look like if you used a plastic bottle. Just place the beans inside and decorate the bottle in any way you want. We use musical instruments to make music, just like this maraca that we made. Praise is powerful. The Bible says that it brings us into the presence of God and that God lives in the praises of His people. Wow! We are actually brought closer to God when we praise Him. Praise is not only done with the music though. You can praise God by words expressing how much you love and adore Him for the good things He has done, for His character, for His works, and for His greatness. Let's make it a habit to praise God every single day, morning, and evening. Really looking forward to seeing what you make, kids. If you want your crafts to be featured in our service next week, you know what to do. Send us an email of your photo to our email address, kidsfort at victory.org.ph. All photos sent to our email will be shown online. 
We'll also give you one raffle entry for a craft raffle for the month of August. That's it for craft time for this week. See you next week, Crafty Kids!